Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to Pathfinding with uh, Network, uh, Network X. We're going to be covering a lot of material today. The first thing that I'm going to point out, which I've done a couple times at this point, is that there's a GitHub out there. You can go ahead and grab that. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at a web-based simulation. Uh, we're going to be going through setting up Network X. We're going to go through some specific examples, then very specific, specifically Dijkstra and ASTAR. Uh, and then we're going to be taking a look at some of the um, new theory in this area, such as jump A star, theta, uh, phi, or phi, however you want to say it, a star, and ant colony optimization. So the idea being that we have a, uh, a situation where we have just a plain, a plain sort of maze. You need to find a path through it. I'm running through it here just to show you. Basically, this is the setup that we're trying to do. This is running Dijkstra. Up at the top, this is a simulation that you can go through so you can really get a pretty good feeling for how pathfinding works. Uh, these are available on the internet. You can, you can find them anywhere. And we'll be covering some of this, although not at this graphic, at this level of graphics. The other thing that we're going to look at here, that was Dijkstra, is another algorithm called ASTAR. Just a quick show of hands. How many people are familiar with Dijkstra? That's a lot. Great. How many are familiar with ASTAR? That's, that's good, too. If you know Dijkstra, you know ASTAR. All right. So this kind of covers just very briefly what we're trying to set up. Um, again, what we're doing here is we're going to be running this in Python Notebook, and we'll be hopping into that very soon. The setup for this uh, session is very straightforward. I basically went to Anaconda, pulled it down, and that's the IPython Notebook I'm using. As a quick side comment, I went through and did all the pip type of stuff that you do, and it very quickly becomes a mess with very many libraries. So really, it really is a good idea to just do Anaconda and call it a day. Keep going. All right, I'm going to cover this super fast. What is a graph theory? Basically, mathematical structures. I'm not even going to bother going through too much of this in detail because you're going to be seeing this over the next 20 minutes. And if you've pulled down the notebook, you can do it as well. So why, why talk about it if you can actually just do it? Network X is a Python language software package, and we'll be running in there and running through uh, a lot of that as well. And then finally, I mentioned this even right up front, which is this, this URL, Red Blob Games, uh, by Amit Patel. Even in the academic literature, they reference that site. So it's a great site, very, very detailed, very well written, and also has a huge number of simulations in it. We'll see that at the very end when we get to it. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. So with that, I'm going to go try to find my notebook. Here I am. And let's go into the very first one. And this looks like it's showing fairly well. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is just give us very, a very quick introduction to Network X, the graphic, um, the graphic library. I'm going to tilt this down a little bit so I can see it. And we're just going to walk through it. So first thing, um, if you're not familiar with uh, IPython, you basically just run this, this Go button at the top. I'm going to call in an iframe. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in that first simulation that we saw at the very beginning. Uh, this is available, and I just put it in the notebook so you could get to it fairly easily. So you could actually, just by holding down a, uh, uh, your mouse, you go ahead and you create a wall. You have your green and your red, and you can go ahead and play with this. And I'm just pointing this out because this is the type of thing that you know, can, can eat up an afternoon. But it's, it's very interesting, and if you play around with it, you get a really good feeling for what makes certain algorithms go a certain way. The next thing is, since we're in IPython, we're going to run some magic commands. Uh, this is going to allow us to uh, display plotlib right in the matplotlib, right in the right in the uh, Python, uh, the IPython notebook. I'm going to run through that, and then here is basically the Network X library, and the URL is up above. But this is also a way to quickly show what's going on, show the uh, website within the within the notebook, and it's uh, we're going to be looking at a lot of these examples. Let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and just import Network X. And the first thing you can see when you pull it in is there is a lot of stuff. This is really almost the equivalent of an interactive encyclopedia about graphing. So anything that you're playing with or reading about, chances are they've written something to, you know, to, do, to do some aspect of it. So the one we're going to be looking at a lot today is A star, A star path, and then also Dijkstra, which will come up here in the bottom. Uh, one thing that I always uh, Always enjoys. There's also a caveman graph if you're doing work with the Flintstones or something. Um, the other one we're going to come by down here is we're going to see Dijkstra in a little bit. And we can see a path, path length, and so on. 
So this is loading up everything that we need for being able to do these. It comes with a full set of help, so you can go ahead and help, and you can see what is what the parameters are, and also it'll tell you, and it's you know whether the path's going to be a list or a dictionary. It's going to tell you what type of parameter. So that's just just a quick example for for that particular one. Let's look at Dijkstra real quickly. Uh, again, it's a network X, and you're going to see this a lot. We have a graph, source, target, and then weights. We're going to build a network X graph in the next notebook that goes through and, and shows all of this. So I'm kind of just sort of prepping things for, for what's available there. I'm going to show you very briefly the, let's see, well, you can also get the same information if you go online. So Dijkstra Path, here it is, just more nicely put together, a little, little prettier formatting, very close to what you saw in the help. Also, the example that you see in the help is available online as well. So you can literally just copy and paste and drop that in and use that right away. So it's a very, very handy area to go to. Um, let's, do, let's do some graphing. Let's, let's do something. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do one of this, this crack heart kite. We're just going to go ahead and, you know, go ahead and draw it. And as you can see here, this is just a random graph, and this is why I, I wanted to just show you, you know, it's pretty quick to jump into. The big issue that you have with uh, Network X is it's very good for doing graph computations. It's not so great at showing things, especially when you get multiple nodes. So if I'm sitting here in the cell and I hit uh, Shift uh, Enter and just kind of run it a couple times, you'll see that it actually jumps around. So the connections are the same, but the um, representation is different. So it's isomorphic to what you're seeing here, but it's um, a different layout every time. And we'll go through in the next notebook getting that set up and then running um, Dijkstra and then also running um, A star on that. Uh, let's go ahead and we can go ahead and see what the shortest path is on this one, 0578. And this, this is small enough that you can probably just take a look at it and say, okay, 05789, great. Uh, let's go ahead and create another graph. Again, a little, more, a little more complex. We can go ahead and do shortest path on that as well. And this kind of gives you a quick set of ready-to-go graphs that you could pull out and experiment on and, and get a quick feeling for. Uh, and again, we can go ahead and run it for this one. Great. So rather than spend a lot of time explaining what graphs are, these are what they are. They're, they're the nodes, they're the vertices, the paths behind them. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. And what we're going to do now at this point is go into a weird mode. That was interesting. Goodbye. Um, all right, so we're back on track here. And I'm, I apologize. I'm completely, I'm not so familiar with this machine. So basically what we want to do is we want to take a graph and create a network graph, go through the steps, and then finally run pathfinding on it, specifically Dijkstra and ASTAR. So let's go back to our regularly scheduled show. And what I've done here is I have a graph. And one of the things you'll find when you go on the, on the internet is there are like zillions of graphs out there. And what I did is I very specifically picked this graph from an edX course. It's archived. You can go in and it ties back the path analysis with the graph. And there's also, as we'll see uh, towards the end, I'll have a, a set of heuristics that we'll use for A star. And you'll be able to see how the pathfinding interacts. So right now, the, the problem is very simple. We have this very pretty graph, and we want to put it into Network X. What, what could go wrong, and how hard, how hard could this be? Uh, so let's go ahead and go through it. We're going through, and we're just going to go ahead. And the first thing we're going to do is declare a graph object. You can see that it's declared as that. And then we're going to just do a quick DIR on a quick DIR on the, on the object. So without. That's just, that's just that. All right. All right. <laughs> Steady. I probably had a little too much coffee to be doing this. I'm not going to touch anything there either. Um, so we're going to do a DIR on the, on the object that we just made. And you can see in the library there are all of these methods that are available that we could actually go ahead and do. Has edge, has node, uh, created, so on and so forth. And we'll use a lot of these to, to immediately start building our graph. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to add edges. We're going to add nodes, S, A, B, C, G. And that's coming from just right here. We're just going to go ahead and create them. So let's go ahead and do that. There are our nodes. We're just double checking. Let's go ahead and draw it. Ah, well, you know, it's a first pass. It's a shot of polka dots. Um, 
And one of the things we're doing right here is we're using just the draw command, which is very, very basic. You put something up fairly quickly. Our next step is to go ahead and do the draw network X command, which gives us a lot more options. We now have the polka dots with some labeling in there, and we can also play around with the color. So we're on the right track. Let's keep going. And now what we've done is we've added edges, and then we've joined the edges. But we have the same problem we had before, which is that this will jump around uh, each time we refresh it. So this, it, isn't, it isn't easy to make an analysis on this because it can always change depending on your representation, on, on just what you're doing. Again, the connections stay the same, but it'll change the way it looks. Let's, I'll just show you. So it went from a little boat to a, hat, a square with a hat to a little trapezoid. You get, you get the impression. You get the, the picture. So let me go back to where I was here. So this is what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and let's add some weights. We added the weights in here as well as attributes. And just we're going to need these weights in order to show them on the graph. So we're going to end up building a dictionary out of these weights. Let's keep going. We're in 19. This is going to show us what we're looking for as a specific, um, what, what the draw network uses. So this is a, a command in network X that has a lot of different um, options. And you can go ahead and set these. And basically, that's what we're doing right now is we're sort of walking through this process of creating this particular graph. And you'll see as we go through it, you know, we're going to change the node shape and so on so that we finally get it the way it should be. One thing you often have to do with um, graphing is you basically have to build a dictionary structure so you can map your points to another set or another list of things. So I'm, I'm pretty slow at this stuff. So what I like to do is a for loop just to make sure that I'm actually getting the right material. And it doesn't really matter what you use here, but this is source and sync. If you're on the internet and you're looking at a lot of examples, this will usually be uh, V and U, for example. This is the data, so I know this is right. I'm going to go ahead and make a dictionary object of it. I'm going to assign it to a variable. I'm going to, because I'm paranoid, as you can well imagine at this point, I'm going to print out the edges and take a look and make sure they're right. Um, we have a positional, a positional parameter of a spring layout. Uh, we're going to try that and just see what we get. We're going to get a little error, but that, this is OK. OK, so now we have a weighted spaghetti graph with this in this format. It might, might jump around as well, so we're now going to have to fix that. Let's go ahead and we'll do it with draw network. And now at this point, if we want it to look like what we're looking for, what we need to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to give it positional values. So just looking at this, 0, 4 would move our S node, for example, up to here. It would be 0 0.0, 0 0.4. And we're going to lay the rest of them out. And that's what this is doing. So we're saying basically take S, put it at 0, 04. A at 4.6, 4.2, and we're just laying it out so it's going to look fairly decent. At least that's the hope. So there it is. It's now a weighted graph. It's still boxed in because we're, we're doing Matplotlib. We'll be able to take that off pretty easily. And voila, we're almost there. We now have a graph with the right weights, with labels, uh, kind of an ugly color, small balls, but we're almost there. Now we've got the billiard ball version of this. And this is kind of, we're on the right track. And what we've basically done is we've played with node size. If you have presentations or you're, you're trying to set up test data and look at it and get a feeling for it, you're going to run into all of these problems. It's very powerful, but it's also got a lot of parameters that you can set. So let's keep going. I'm not going to show you that, but what I will do is this. So one thing you can do is you can display the HTML version of a particular color. That's this kind of magic hash whatever. Oh my gosh, so we're, we're actually pretty, pretty darn close at this point. We've got the right colors, we've got the weightedness, we have the connection. Uh, we can go ahead and add the directionality of the arrows to it, but I'm not even going to worry about that at this point. And now we're actually ready to do analysis on this, on this thing. So first of all, the, the shortest path between S and G, anyone want to hazard a guess? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. The, that's, the, that's the easiest one. Yep. No problem. If we're doing a Dijkstra path, what we're going to be doing is just taking the weights of these guys. So if we did that top shortest path, we'd now be 1 and 12 is 13 to get to G. So that's clearly not a contender. 
uh, one, if we went from S to four to two, that would be four and two is six, and then three more is nine, not a contender. Let's go ahead and after all this work, let's let, let it give us the answer. Uh, basically, SA pre operation is because we're going to look at how this is handled programmatically, and then we're going to look at how A star does this. So hang on tight, we're almost there. A star, we're going to run this again. Now, A star does the same thing that Dijkstra does, but with a heuristic. There is no heuristic here, so it's just going to basically do exactly what, a Dijk, what Dijkstra's uh, graph would do. And that's what we get. And this is the equivalent of running this with heuristic equal to none. All right. Dare I touch this machine again? I should like keep one hand up in the air the whole time or something. Uh, let's go ahead and go back. You know what, I'm going to, since, since we're so crunched for time due to my incredible abilities, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump right into the next notebook, apparently from GitHub. So let me not do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how this, how this actually runs. And this is, I know we're probably, we're coming down on time, but let me just set this up and show you what it looks like. One of the things you'll see when you go out on the internet and you look at these, these graphing problems and shortest graphs is almost nobody goes out into network X and says, okay, what I just ran through, you go do that and you'll, you'll be able to use that for your analysis. What you typically see is they'll go ahead and they'll represent it as a dictionary and then they will run the algorithm, either Dijkstra or A star, directly on the dictionary. And you'll see this, you'll, you'll, you'll see literally two classes of problems. One is sort of the network X approach and then there's the this representation where you write it up from scratch. If you pick up any textbook that goes through heaps or bubble sorts, one minute, wow, uh, you'll see that that's how it's represented. And how this works is that you can go ahead and take a, a node and then just say what it points to and then what the weights are. So if we look at it this way, we have node zero up here, one goes to one for one, goes to two for four, and then the next node, one, one here, points down to two for two. See how that works? And then three for five. And then four goes from one to four for 12. What this does when, you're, when you put it into a programming context is it makes it really easy. Because what you'll do is you'll be able to take each vertex and then walk through the dictionary of what nodes they are, collect this distance, in a cumulative manner, and then compare whether you have the best path or not. I know I'm on one minute, so I'm, I'm now doing this completely verbally. So you would go from zero to one, you would have a distance of one. You'd go from zero to four, you'd have a distance of four. Now when you go from one to two, you have this distance one, and you're adding two, so you end up with three. One plus the five is six, one plus the 13 is four. And what you're doing is you're taking the graph di dictionary structure and updating the distance structure with that information. And I have the word stop, but I'll say one last quick thing, which is A star adds one additional wrinkle to this, which is a heuristic that tells you, hey, this is really far away so from, from zero, so it's going to cost more than going from one to four. And that's literally just a table or a set of numbers that you could put into this. I think I, I have to stop, so um, I'm set. Thank you, everyone. I'm, I'm sorry. Thank you.